Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. And we are here tonight live, uh, Facebook Live. But not only are we Facebook Live, we have a live studio audience. Make some noise. <laughs> and our studio audience is made up of millennials. And I am so excited to welcome them, to have all of them here tonight. We have uh, Jasmine, who is uh, going to lead us out with some questions in a little while. And we have Pastor John, who is our children's pastor at the main table. We have Pastor Leslie, who is our uh, children's pastor. Pastor John is our youth pastor. I think I messed up because I've been saving this all day. Because then we have Pastor Mark that we have found out today in staff meeting who wants to be called creative pastor. <laughs> and, and we have behind the cameras always doing an excellent job, Brother Carnell Pickett. And we have the audience and uh, RJ's here. And so look, you, you just can't beat it. First of all, I want you to go immediately and share. Hit the share button and say that Salem is on live, Facebook Live, with millennials talking about solutions. We're talking about solutions. Now we're gonna bring up some problems, but as we bring up the problems, the main thing that we're trying to get to are the solutions. So we don't start a lot of things around here without prayer, so let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for who you are, your love and your kindness and your great mercy. Thank you, God, for technology. Thank you for uh, the young people who've populated uh, the studio tonight. Thank you for our panel. And we pray now, God, that you would be glorified in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're here talking about solutions tonight, and then we're getting ready for our millennial uh, get-together. I don't know what we call it, celebration, brunch. Okay, just call it brunch. We call it brunch, power brunch. And the power brunch will be this Sunday uh, from 1 to 4 at the Tilly's Restaurant, 100 and something in Torrance. Where is it? What is it? 100 and what? Anybody got the address? 161st is good enough. If you right across the street from River Oaks Mall. Right across Old the York street Oaks. from River o Oaks Mall. So we're talking about solutions tonight. The statistics tell us a lot of things about millennials, and we're getting ready to hear what those things are in a moment. But I am excited to say that all of the young people that you see at this table tonight, at our panel table, they work here at the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. And so this is our young blood, young life, and their whole goal is to keep all of us relevant and to make sure that our church does not come old and stale and that our church has not forgotten that this is a generation that's coming behind the baby boomers. And then there's a generation that's coming, uh, that's Generation X, but then there's a generation that came behind them, that's millennials. Then there's a generation that's coming behind the millennials. So how do we stay relevant and how do we stay focused and how do we make sure that churches around America does not lose any generation because there's room for us all. When I was young uh, and coming up in church, we didn't have these names, X or millennials. We were just all teenagers or kids <laughs> or young adults. I, I felt proud when we became young adults because at least somebody considered that we were gonna be an adult one day, but now we have all of these labels. And so there's a lot being said about millennials, but we're here to talk about solutions. And so who's gonna start us out at our main table? All right. The first thing that we want to talk about is the idea of spirituality versus religion. So a lot of millennials, actually 59% of millennials that were raised in church, meaning they know God, they have some sense of uh, religion, feel have left the church. They haven't left God necessarily, but they feel like, well, I'm more religious than I am. I'm sorry, I'm more spiritual than I am religious. So what do you say uh, to that? Well, I say that one of the greatest joys about the church is that a church is a place where we can learn and where we can grow. It's very rare when a person is disciplined enough on his or her own to go through the study techniques 
that it takes to really understand the Bible. That's just like a person can work out on their own, but when a person has a personal trainer, somebody who has been uh, developed in that area, somebody who's skilled, somebody who knows, that individual is going to be able to help you much better than you are just going to the gym and doing it on your own. I remember when I went to the gym trying to just do it on my own, lifting weights, and I didn't even have any weights on there. I was just lifting the bar and some starter something. I didn't know until the people came around and told me, you're doing it all wrong. And so that's the danger in trying to be spiritual. And I think that people who are religious or people who are Christians, we're, we're, not, we're not religious, we're Christians. And people who are Christians, I think we are spiritual. But the main thing is that we believe that people in a church, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, these people are called by God to do the things that they are teaching you to do. They're being called by God, they're being equipped. And so it's a danger in saying to yourself that I'm not gonna go among the people who are trained, who are equipped, who are called by God, I'm gonna just do it on my own. That's one of the dangers in that question, Jazz. Okay, uh, some people were saying they can't hear me, so if we could do a test. Okay, perfect. So you guys can hear me. Let me see, uh, put some comments in there. We also want to know uh, if you have any questions or if you have any statements that you want to say. And we're going to hear from our studio audience, if anybody in our studio audience has anything to say. But I do want to answer a quick question. What are the ages? The ages for the brunch is 20s and 30s. So we're going to simplify it. If you are in your 20s, or your 30s, you are invited to brunch with us and you are considered a part of this discussion. So the next thing we wanna talk about is, is the Bible relevant anymore? So the research that we have seen says that 53% of millennials never to seldom read their Bible. So is the Bible so relevant? Um, and another big thing that a lot of millennials feel like that is really not the word of God, is really not what God said. So what do you have to say about uh, that? I say that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Uh, there's a scripture that says, Thy word hath I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. That is a trick of the enemy. Now, we believe that in the Christian church, there is an enemy, and the enemy is the devil. And for me to hear that the Bible is no longer relevant uh, is to eventually say that God is no longer relevant. How will we know? what God expects of us. How will we know God's likes, his dislikes, what he approves of, unless we go to a book that we feel has been handed to us by the Holy Spirit of God and to tell us what God would have us to know and what God would have us to do or not to do. Now, there are so many generations who come along before you guys who built this country on the word of God. And yes, there were some people who misused the word of God for all kinds of reasons, but it was still the word of God that was the guiding principle, the Bible, in founding this country. And then even before America was founded, the word of God was used by people long before we got here. There's a scripture that says, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I have never, I'm gonna tell you this now, if you don't hear anything else that we say tonight, if you turn it off right now, I have never seen a person who lives by the principles of the Bible who will stand and attest that this is wrong, that this has guided me wrong, that I'm an unhappy or a miserable person. I have never seen, but I have seen plenty of people who don't read it, who try to say what it ain't. <laughs> but I've never seen a person who reads it who will say this is not what it says that it is. And so it's one of the things that I say we cannot, cannot afford to live this life and neglect or negate the most important book that our world has, and that's the Bible. Does anyone at the table have anything? Pastor John, Pastor Leslie? Or a statement about or, the Bible. I yeah, mean, well, that's what I'm saying. The uh, about the Bible or Mark. And the importance of reading the Bible, especially as young adults. 
I definitely would encourage uh, young adults to read a different version. I think is it which version is it that you suggest? New Living Translation. New Living Translation. Trying to read the King James Version is just yeah. is is oh Lord. But what what I could say about about the Bible is that truly um, it's it, it's it's the daily inspiration. It's the reminder of God's plan for us. Uh, his will for our life, his plans he has for us. So it's those daily affirmations of reading his word and keeping it close to your heart that helps you in those moments of doubt and or def defeat that you know that God is with you. Um, that's what I've learned when I've gone through my tests and my trials and things that scripture will come to come to mind. Jeremiah 29, 11 will come to mind for you know the plans you have for me, plans to prosper, you know, plans for a prosperous life. Those things that come to my mind when I'm feeling lower things so i think the word of god is truly that current that uh, constant <clears throat> reminder of god's love for us absolutely yeah i would say uh, unfortunately there's a lot of um information on the internet where people just watch youtube videos and they get all of this information and you're taking that in as to this must be true about the bible so for instance if people say what about this book? This book isn't real or the validity of that. And I would say, if you're going to take the time to listen to those videos and to do that research, also take the time to read books on the other side that support mm. the validity of scripture. So it's one book that I would like to recommend, and it's called Room for Doubt. And it goes through every facet of what is the Bible true? Um, what, what books in the Bible have been questioned? Are the gospels true? I would take the time to read that if you're going to say, that the word of God um, has lost its power or its validity because a lot of times it's a deeper issue than um, the word of God is no longer relevant for my life. And I would say take the time to try something that the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Just do it and then see if it's wrong. You know, all of us in here today, tonight, we know how to drive. But the only way we all know how to drive is because there's a book that we all had to learn called Rules of the Road. And the rules tell us what to do and what rules tell us what not to do. God is intelligent enough for the people that he created to come up with a guideline. And the Bible is not all about don't, what not to do. It's what to do in order to seek God or in order to put God first. And so I would encourage everybody who's watching to find some people who actually believe the Bible and have sought to live the Bible and ask them whether or not the Bible does what it says it's going to do. The only thing you can do, if you're going to talk to somebody about Coachella, ain't that what it is? Ain't that what it is? Coachella. Coachella, Coachella. Coachella is not like a coat or something that you wear. Uh, if you're going to talk to somebody about Coachella, who wasn't there? Who wasn't there? They ain't have a ticket. They ain't see it online. They ain't see their information is based on something they heard somebody else say. If you really want to talk to a person about Coachella, the best person to talk to is somebody who was there. And so the best people to talk to the Bible about are people who actually try to live the Bible. All yeah. right. And I would just add to not to belabor or you know push the moment, but if you are consistently in the word learning the word it's a lot harder for people to bring up false things about the bible to you mm -hmm. I, again i had a millennial who i was very close with who was like man i was on cnn saw this guy he said that the gospel was never for the jews i was like man that's crazy mm -hmm. i started giving him story after story and we have some people in the room over here who dive into the word every single week as a group Thank God we got this community here with Van uh, and, and, and Brandy and so many people who are in it, Stefan, who every week they're together encouraging one another and other millennials and young adults about the word. And you can come and bring all your questions to them. So uh, you guys can definitely jump in and say something any now and then. But yes, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at the House of Hope here um, every second, third, and fourth Wednesday. Every Wednesday except first Wednesday. You can come and ask all these questions and really learn the word for yourself. All right, all right. All right, am I back up, Carnell? All right, so let me tell you, in my uh, attempt to um, be at one with and to uh, be on one accord with millennials, I did something tonight, this evening, 
that I have never done before. And this is my first attempt at it, but I wanted to be at one with millennials. I didn't wear any socks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is, here it go, don't miss it. This is, a look, I'ma just, I'ma just put it up. This is my first day out ever without socks. All right, I gotta go a little higher. All right, here you go. Oh. This is my first no sock attempt. I don't have any socks on. I have never walked out the house before. My daddy is turning over in his natural grave that I don't have any socks on. But I said, okay, I'm gonna see what's to it. I walked out the house, my ankle started saying, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> And, uh, but that, that's, that's my attempt, man. I'm trying all that I can to identify with this generation. How uh, do you feel? Huh? <laughs> well, you know, it feels a little free. <laughs> 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 but the question is not the question that you have to ask me. The question is the question that you're gonna have to ask Jamel. How does it smell? Oh. <laughs> You gotta do some no-show passes yeah. that'll, that'll coat the bottom of them for you. That'll coat no, the bottom? Yeah, some no-show socks. All righty, well, I, I, I'll see. So let me just tell you, I'm trying to identify. <laughs> All right, so we have a question from Dara. She has recently moved, so she was a former member of Salem, and she wants a tip on how do you find the right church. She says she feels like it is impossible to find a teaching Bible-based church. So, Dara, let us know, first of all, where you moved to, and we may have a suggestion, and also you can answer that question. You know, I just knew that was how can you find the right mate. I just, did anybody else think that was how you find the right mate? Well, well, I just knew that was how can you find the right mate. And I was saying to myself, okay, here the love life questions go. Here the, that's what I came for. That's right. Uh, but, yes, Dara... Mm -hmm. Dara. Let, Dara, let us know where you are, and we will do our best to give you a Bible-based She's church. in Minneapolis. She's in Minneapolis, all right? We, I will, uh, we'll, we get her information, and we'll get back to her. I don't have, that's a Minneapolis roller decks <laughs> off the top but, of my head. But when people are in general looking for a church, yeah, what do on? you, what are some tips on in general looking for a good church or the church that's for you? Absolutely. You ask the people at your job, what church do you go to? Why is it that you like it? I am from a Bible-based church at uh, in Chicago, and usually people who are in a Bible-based, Bible-teaching church when they hear the word Bible-based, they know whether or not they're in a Bible-based. They, they, they would say, oh, our church is Bible-based. We teach the word. We, you know, they will tell you that. So ask the people on the, on the job. Ask the people at the restaurants. Ask people everywhere that you are in Minneapolis. The mall uh, of America. Ask people, you know, that you know there. Hey, I'm looking for a good Bible-based church. And when you use the word Bible-based, it's a key. And people will start giving you uh, advice. So that, that's my, my shot at it. Internet ain't always good to me to type in Bible-based, but it's, it's something. Rev, one of the topics that we were discussing about millennials and church is uh, the, the, the community of the church and how important that is to millennials. Uh, one of the stats that I was reading was saying that uh, most seventy percent of uh, millennials were polled as would they like to worship in privacy or worship within community, mm -hmm. and seventy percent said they would like to worship in community. Um, mm -hmm. What do you have to say about community and church, Pastor, and with millennials? Mm -hmm. uh, you know the psalm: "We are invited uh, to worship together." And uh, oh, magnify the Lord, the psalmist said, "With me." and let us exalt his name together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in God's name, touching and agreeing, and he will be in the midst. Uh, community is, a, is one, of, one of the only great ways to worship. Now, I encourage everybody, you can worship in your car, you can worship at home, but when we come together as a group of people, in community to worship. As I mentioned on Sunday, when the uh, people, the disciples were on the Emmaus Road, and then after they had 
communion with Jesus, meaning that they sat down, they ate a meal together. It was then he opened their eyes. And I have said that it's something about the local assembly that God uses to reveal himself. And so I am glad that 70%, now there's a, I have a contradiction because if 70% of millennials are saying that they like worship, why is it that the number is down to the low 50s of those who like church? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> church is where we worship. But for those of you who do uh, enjoy worship, worship is done best in a, and with a group of people. But anybody who worships in a group, they also should have a private worship at home. Anybody. Worship is not a thing that we just do when we get together on Sunday. Worship is when we wake up in the morning and spend our personal time also with the Lord. But then for those of you who want to say, ain't that enough? No, that ain't enough because we come together. So what does our studio audience think about any of this? Or you could change the topic. This is a good thing about uh, us being together tonight. You don't have to just say the stuff that we've been talking about. You could just change the topic anytime you get ready. And I to see you all are able to see our beautiful room, our beautiful men and women who are here tonight. Well, I actually, it's so funny, the spirit works. I actually was going to ask Stephen about community and being a married couple. Stephen and his wife are really uh, main uh, pillars of the married couple ministry and being young people. How is that affect your marriage, um, being in a community of other married, Christian married couples? I think when we began a community um, of other married couples and when we really connected with other married couples and built relationship with other married couples is really when we began to be blessed, really when we began to see God take off in our marriage and began to be used in a mighty way. Uh, we talked earlier about even singles being wanting to have a relationship within the church and that keeping people in the church as far as that relationship and not just because they're coming church to church but when you have relationship with someone you're more apt to show up you're more apt to serve you're more apt to do more in the church than just attend church to receive a word but to give back to church as well so once we joined the married couples ministry and Thomas and Patrice began to pour into us and began to spend time with us and we began to build a relationship with them. That was an amazing thing and our, our marriage took off from there. All right. Anybody else have anything they wanna add about community from the audience? Before we get or to community, else? can I say this? Can I say how cool this is, the Facebook Live setup? You know, usually when I see Facebook Live, it's like a person <laughs> with a cell phone right, right. in their car, you know, <laughs> talking to people. And then we got like one group over here at the table. We got other groups on the couch. I'm sitting here with my feet up. And I don't know how Carnell rigs all this stuff together <laughs> and fix it. But uh, you all should be glad that God blessed the body of Christ with young, talented people. Yes. Because if it was up to the old guy like me, I would be sitting in my car talking to y'all, <laughs> and I'd be saying, you know, and I'd be telling y'all how modern the church was and how hip we were and the fact that we had space for young people. All y'all got to do is come on down. It would just be me in my car talking. <laughs> and just look at what happens tonight when uh, we allow young people with vision and, and ability and know-how to just take over and so I'm hats off to you but anyway speaking of that I know you wanted to mention about our Easter production um and ability and, and who was behind our Easter production man very good so this Easter we had uh the entire production it was handled by the millennials of our church uh Pastor John Pastor Leslie they were responsible for the Easter production so they went out and got other millennials they went out and they got other millennials four writers to put together the production they were all millennials and then it was all young people who were the cast of the play and then all young dancers uh it was phenomenal it's fantastic those of you who want to see it go online right now at sbcoc.org and find our facebook page 
and just look at it on online. But our Easter production, the entire production, it was staff, hosted, thought of everything by millennials. Because again, when I told you guys uh, a few months ago that we were turning over a new leaf here at Salem and we were making room for those of you who are between uh, 24 and 35 or whatever age millennials are, it's the truth. We are. We are stepping back and asking you all who have talent, who have gifts, let God have your gift. Let yes. God have your talent. Let God uh, use you to bless other people. And so I want to go back to the questions, but I also don't want us to forget projects. Pastor, before you move on, we, we have one of the writers from the play right here in our studio audience, Mr. Andre Gray. <laughs> Mr. Andre, all right. All right. And Mark, I understand that you had all millennials in this in the sound room. Yeah, yeah, we had a young crew on Sunday, and, yeah, and yeah. Andre is also he helps with the scriptures and the lyrics on Sundays with, with Reverend Meek. So we millennials, the millennials taking over, taking over Salem. So let's give it up for Andre. Take it over, please. Take it over, take it over, please. All right, all right. Let's go back to our questions. Uh, we have Mimi Davis, Pastor. This is a good one. Uh, I can relate to this. And one. let's remember to go to first names when we're doing the Facebook names. Let's just say Nimi rather than Nimi Davis because I don't want her friends to be asking her no questions. Okay. So, <laughs> so we, got, we, got, we got my girl Mimi. She said, as a millennial, we struggle with busyness. What are some ways to quiet down the noise or chaos in your everyday life in order to even hear the voice of God? That's a great, great question. Uh, you know, God, not only does God want a place, and this is the difficulty about teaching about God, but we, we might as well know it. Not only does God want a place, he wants first place. And uh, he doesn't want to just be fit in. He That's wants good. to be given first priority, even in the Ten Commandments. The very first thing he said was now, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt have no other busyness before me. I'm number one. And so I would say to uh, Nimi, my sister, Start with God. Start the day off. Every morning when you get up, just say, I'm going to set 10 minutes aside mm -hmm. to pray. Or I'm going to just set 10 minutes aside to listen. I'm going to just sit here and listen and see what God wants to talk to me about. Or I'm going to set 10 minutes aside to listen to something, some soft, quiet music. And I want to think about God that 10 minutes. Now, of course, those of us who are more mature in the faith and mature, we, we could spend an hour in prayer. We could spend 30 minutes in prayer or 30 minutes reading the scripture. But start out with God. And then the fact that you started out with God, the Bible says if we seek first the kingdom, then all else will be added unto us. You will discover that when you put God first, he'll help you prioritize some of that other busyness. And so that's my best answer for that one. We have a question, and it's fitting because this is one of our topics that we wanted to discuss. Tracy says, as a young adult, how can we go out and spread the gospel? And one statistic that I read when we were looking for this is that 47%, so almost half of millennials, agree that it is wrong to share one's beliefs with someone of a different faith. So 47% of millennials don't think it's right to evangelize to someone of a different faith. So how can we be better evangelists as millennials? Um, and I definitely would love to hear for also from our studio audience of what they think about that. All right, I'll kick it off by saying that if I'm the devil, and it is hard to imagine that, but if I'm the devil, the one thing that I want the Christian church to not do is to share their faith. So of course I'm going to try to tell each generation that it's wrong to share your faith with somebody of another faith. Um, and so if I would say to millennials, anything that we ought to want to do is we ought to want to engage people in conversation, whoever they are, and just tell them why we believe what we believe and simply say, if I could talk to you any more about this, come to me and let me know. And then you pray by yourself and say, now God, send them back to me. You're real. I know you want them to hear more about your word. I know you want them to be saved. God, send them back to me. You don't have to badger people. You don't have to go up to other people and say, hey, your faith is 
uh, wrong or my faith is right. All you have to do is the Bible says, and, and notice how much even unconscious I keep referring back to the Bible says, because once it's in you and once you know what it says, it becomes your frame of reference. But the Bible says always be willing to give reason for the hope that's within you. And so I simply say to all of you millennials, just share your story, share your faith, share about the time you were without Christ, how you came to know Christ, what he means in your life, and tell your friends if you'd like to know more at a point, hit me up, let me know, and I guarantee you God will send them back to you. So I would love to hear, um, right before we hear from our studio audience, we have Jared, who is a youth church volunteer, very, very involved, um, that is giving some solutions of things we can do. And we want to know this summer, what are some outreach things we can do? We want some specific suggestions from you guys. So if you think, uh, what is it that you think we should do to get um, out on the streets? What can we do? How can we help people? But more importantly, how can we minister and evangelize? Um, to people. So studio audience, does anybody have any suggestions for um, evangelism, whether it be subtle or direct um, in your life that you've seen effective with your friends or coworkers? One thing I would say, it's really important to care about the person you witness into. Mm. If we're Christians, we believe that Jesus is the only way to God. Uh, although it may be uncomfortable, Although it may uh, make you feel like the person may be bothered or offended, uh, you have to express your love to that person. And the way that we do that as Christians is to share what Jesus did in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul in scripture said it, he reasoned with people about the scriptures. If sometimes if you want to share the gospel and there's somebody well informed about their religion, I think it's a good idea to uh, share your testimony. One, number two. Uh, reason with them, reason with them about what the scripture says and do it in the right spirit. Um, earlier, Reverend Meeks touched on making sure that you ask God to send that person to you. I believe it's really important not to get argumentative, not to get um, mean spirited during that conversation, but do it with the right spirit and love and kindness. You know, one of the things that millennials, as I do this research, uh, one of the things that millennials think is that the church is just interested in people for numbers. They don't think that we care about the person. We just want to say our church has this many people or this many people join. So you hit the nail on the head when you said care. We have to care about the other individual and we have to care about where their soul will spend eternity. And if people know that you care about them genuinely, they genuinely will listen to what you have to say. You know. So I want to put a challenge uh, out to everybody, all the people in their 20s and 30s that are in the studio audience as well as watching. A great way to evangelize is to invite them or invite your friend or family member or coworker to an event. So we have the brunch coming up right. this Sunday at Tilly's. Um, we have a lot of fun. They get to meet Pastor Meeks. They get to be around other Christians. Um, we're not there to, you know, be like, well, what church you go to? And, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> we just want to meet people and do life together and wow. fellowship. So tickets are only $10 for the brunch. You get a full entree, a side, and something to drink only for $10. Um, those of you who were at the last brunch, make sure you make your comments about how awesome it was, how much food you got for $10, and invite them out to that. And then they get to see other Christian young people um, living as an example, and you don't have to shove it down their throats per se, but just invite them out to an event. Um, we have a couple of events coming up, and so make sure Tilly's on Sunday, we're going to put the link in the chat for those of you that want to sign up. We only have 200 spots, and we uh, almost capped that last time, so make sure if you want to come Sunday, you register today and bring a friend. Pay for them. It's a good $10 investment. And, and uh, I don't look in nobody's glass to see what you're drinking. <laughs> uh, I just hug people and shake hands with people, and Jamel is there, and she hug hands, hug people, we shake hands. But now, I want to say this. Our seniors, I understand, our widows, they're having a brunch in the next few weeks, 
And uh, I am gonna look in their glasses. <laughs> I, I just want you to know. I just want you to know. I'm, I leave millennials' glasses alone. You know, tell them what you gonna pick up, what you gonna <laughs> smell. So we ain't getting into that. But uh, widows, I will look at those glasses. How many people do we have with us tonight? 132 people on right now. All right. On fantastic. Facebook and. Um, we have 28, 28 people on Instagram. On Instagram. All so right. About 150 hit, people. Hit the share button. We have about 20 more minutes. And uh, hit the share button so that you can share and let your friends know that you're on. Those of you who went to the last uh, Tilly's event, Jasmine already said it. Why don't you just chime in and say, I'll be there. It was good. It was bad. <laughs> Whatever you want to say about it. And then those of you with questions, you have questions. We want to hear your questions. And so, let us know what it is that you have on your mind. Anybody in our studio audience got a question that they want uh, the, uh, us to talk about before we go on back to the, to the screen? Or just statement about Tilly's. Y'all can talk about Tilly's. <laughs> it ain't about Tilly's either. This is going all the way back to the first question with the Bible. Um, one thing that really just kicks my socks off um, as I read the Bible more is a lot of times, you know, God will talk to you. Like if you ask a question, if you read something and you don't understand it, next thing you know, I kid you not, Pastor Meeks will be talking about it or Stephen will be talking about it. And it really just <laughs> blows my mind. And I'll be at church like having a fit, like, thank you, Jesus. Because he just yeah. answered my question. So. And, and notice how I'm Pastor Meeks and Stephen is Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Always keep it right there. He just, he just Stephen. And we don't ever want to think he more than that. He's Stephen. And I'm Pastor Meeks. That's right. All right. And let me say this. This weekend, we gave away, our church was able to give away 10,000 canned goods woo, woo. to our community. <laughs> And we gave out the canned goods to the food shelters in our community who feed people. And these young people who are in the room tonight are the young people who actually delivered the food. And they took the food. And so I'm telling you, millennials are making it happen here at Salem. And uh, y'all, as, as Stephen would say, <laughs> y'all doing the doggone thing. <laughs> and we're really excited about it. Yes, ma'am. So I guess mine will be a comment about Tilly's. It's a lot of fun. Pastor will dance with you. Take a ton of pictures. I want to so, you know, with you yeah, so. all night. He's been learning all the slides that possible. So, you know, it's I know fun. One. You know one. I know one slide. I dance <laughs> on that one slide that I know. If y'all play that five times, I dance five times. <laughs> and uh, other than that, you're on your own. And the food is awesome. Yeah. All right. Yes, the food is so it's so, so you, much food. There you have it. This is our big plug for being with us on next on this coming Sunday, one until four, Tilly's restaurant, right across the street from River Oaks, hundred and sixty first and Torrance. You ought to be there. R J. So I just wanted to uh touch on uh the the, the uh can good drive we did this past yeah. Saturday and I uh, just wanted to say that it was an uh, awesome experience. Uh, for us to go out and be a blessing and uh, and actually just made a post about it because it was it was amazing and humbling at the same time because uh, Reverend Meeks you entrusted the young men of Salem to go out and, and represent the church on the churches that you have so you had enough faith in us that we would go out and represent and we had Van and Steven and Steve Wheeler and Elliot Echols and uh, the five of us kind of led this whole effort with the support of our sisters uh, and it was just an awesome experience going around and being able to be a blessing to those in the community. And going back to that point earlier about how do you uh, kind of evangelize to those uh, who may be of different faith or of no faith at all. And I've learned from experience is that just going out and being yourself, you'd be surprised at how many people will be drawn to you uh, just by being yourselves. And so me working in corporate America, a lot of people laugh and joke, but people call me reverend and pastor and uh, a co-worker of mine called me BB, which stands for Bishop Bob. And so, uh, and I, I laugh at it, but uh, I take that as a compliment because they yeah. see how I live my life yep. yeah. and I'm not out here trying right. to fit in, but uh, opposed, I'm just living my life and people are drawn to me yeah. and then they're drawn to the God in me. So yeah. uh, that's just pretty much how I live my life. That's fantastic. Now, can I ask a question, generational question? So when you see old men, like in the church, in the mall, wherever, old men never remove their Bluetooth, right? Uh, <laughs> 
You, you always, you Bluetooth, always, Bluetooth you, you always know an OG, right? You always know an OG because he got that Bluetooth. He don't never remove. So is it generational then as I sit and look at RJ with his AirPod in? Is that the same thing old men started with Bluetooth? So they still, they got them in. So, and, and that's really old. That's old when you do that. That's, that's old when you do that. But when you have an AirPod in, it ain't, it, it's like hip or it ain't old. So what's up with that? I, Rev, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a badge of affluency. You know, yeah. when you have your, your AirPod, they're so expensive. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like it's, a, it's like wearing a Gucci belt. You know what I'm saying? It's a Ferragamo loafer. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a badge of affluency. You know, you, you're doing something with your life. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so it's just like hip the way I'm, and he, even if ain't nobody gonna call you, I mean I'm live on live on the set I, and I just turned my phone off. <laughs> but I just wanna look affluent. If that's what it is, just look affluent. Now I can have here, y'all. <laughs> All right, so millennials, those of you who are watching tonight, whatever question you want to ask in the next 15 minutes, we are going to try to tackle it as people who are believers, people who go to church, what, whatever it is you're struggling with, what, what you like, what you dislike, whatever comments you want to make, we are here to talk about it tonight. And so uh, tell me the next one that comes in. And really quick, I just want to shout out some people that are registering for the brunch right now. So shout out to Danielle and Pamela and Sherry, yeah. all of you who have gotten or getting your tickets right now. My <laughs> Sherry and more. So if you get your tickets in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to shout you out. I'm going to look at who's, who's registering and shout you out in the next 15 minutes. All right. That's all right. That's cool. My Sherry. There are some questions that someone wanted to talk about dating um, now in this climate, but if you can make your uh, questions as specific as possible. So those of you who have questions coming in, Try to make them as specific as possible. And if we can get a commercial break really quick so that Van or Steven can talk about, or Brandy can talk about our young adults um, Sunday school class. So if y'all can tell us really quick about life the young adult, group. I'm sorry, life group Sunday, whatever. Life class, Sunday school class, let's do life together class. Now Brandy gonna try to act like she's shy. <laughs> like, I ain't one, and I'm shy. <laughs> Um, so every Wednesday, every Wednesday, but first Wednesday, we have young adult life class. And basically it's teacher Van, teacher Steven, myself, and actually a lot of people you see here. And we all just get together and talk about life as a Christian. We break down the Bible. We have real conversation. We deal with real life issues that we have, such as dating, such as working, getting busy. I mean, being busy as far as work and um, things like that, and just being real about life in general, trying to be a Christian, trying to battle with all the different sins that come our way, and that no sin is greater than the next. Um, dealing with judgment, de dealing with you name it, we talk about it, and it's not just the teachers, we're all learning together. So um, we're a little family, we get together, we hang out. Y'all have food. Right, the best part is food. We have food, so <laughs> Every for week. now, until it gets so big that we can't afford it anymore. <laughs> oh no, oh no, we gotta put um, to a collection together. Right, <laughs> but um, every Wednesday, 6 p.m., even if you come at 6.45, you know, we'll talk, we'll fellowship, everything, and we've really become a little family, right? I would say so. So you so. scared me to death. You said we talk about dating and getting busy. And I'm saying, <laughs> no, no, no. That's not the order. Being busy. So one of the, the suggest <laughs> one of the questions the young lady had earlier was about um, being I, busy I with life. Yeah. And so, yeah, so <laughs> no, not being busy, but busy mm -hmm. with life. Right. <laughs> I just want to shout out Mimi. Uh, who she's been very involved. We've asked a couple of her questions because they were great questions. She said that she became a member in tw 2006. She was driving all the way from Rogers Park, and now she drives all the way from Des Plaines because wow, she just wow. cannot go to another church. So first of all, Mimi, the fact that Mimi is driving all the way from there, we really don't have any excuse. 
But uh, shout out to Mimi. But Mimi, that. we want to see you Sunday. So after church, come on down and make sure that I know who you are. Jasmine uh, might come over. And uh, Reverend Stephen will definitely be there. But I want to meet you. These young ladies are always at the altar. Uh, <laughs> in other words, they are the ones who come down and help when people want to become a member. So come, come down to the altar as soon as church is over and let us know that this is you. All right? So with, we, we with have there questions question about dating? From, wait, can I do it? Uh, oh, no, go yes. ahead, go ahead. We're also looking for more people who want to... Uh, you know, participate in the ministry. So if you would like to join yes. a ministry, please just go to the, the uh, guest services desk and we will gladly accept you into the baptismary min uh, ministry. All right. Now, that doesn't mean that you are getting baptized every week when you're in the baptismary <laughs> ministry. That means All right. What was the question, Jazz? I'm sorry. Okay, we have a question on Instagram, and someone wants to know the reason we pay tithes. Where do they go, and why do we need to pay tithes? All right. And so uh, we pay tithes because we give our gifts to the Lord. And so, no, and the money don't go, like, straight up to heaven. God doesn't have an app where we just send all the money to God. It, it goes then, too. And every, every Sunday I pray the same prayer and I say and Lord let this money be used for the upbuilding and the furtherance of your kingdom and so we use the money for that to further the kingdom to further the kingdom's message for instance the church is on television we have to pay for that for instance the church meets in a facility that the facility is not free we are it's, we own it but it's just like our house the house ain't we own the house, but we paying for it. And so we have to pay for it. There is uh, toilet paper in all of the washrooms when you go in there. We have to <laughs> yes. We have to pay for it. The heat is on in the uh, winter, and the air conditioner is on in the summertime. We have to pay for it. We have some technical, skilled workers who have to work and get us hooked up and on TV they have to be paid. And so there are things that we have to use tithes and offerings to pay for, but that's just on the technical side. Then there are other people that we have to help, uh, and we never know who runs into what kind of trouble, and the church has to bail them out or help them in some kind of way. For those of you who don't know it, and we really don't ever broadcast it, and one of the reasons we don't broadcast it is because when you broadcast things, then all of a sudden, everybody who didn't know. But when there are members of our church who are in some kind of a need, and they come to our deacon committee and our mission committee and explain the need, and once we check it out and verify it, and verify that, you know, we help, we do, we have to help people. And so uh, those are some of the things we do with tithes. Amen. Yes. We have a, something from our studio audience. Can you say your name so we know? Yes, I'm Ayana. Most people call me Yanni. Hey, Yanni. Hey, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to not pay tithes, and um, I used to have that same question, and I just think it's just important to first recognize that it's not our money in the first place. We're stewards of that money, um, and then when you're paying your 10%, you're giving that money back, and once you give it back to God, like Pastor said, you did your part and you know Salem is planning on doing something great for Mother's Day like bailing some moms up out of jail and I just think that's amazing that's why I like absolutely love Salem because it's like you know you're paying your tithes and then you're seeing that you it's not like Salem ain't doing anything yeah. they obviously doing something and so first recognize your stewards of that money and you're giving that money back to God and then you know he go give it back to you more abundantly so just check yourself we're really excited about that. Every year we go to jail for Mother's Day and we, you know, choir goes, they sing, Jamel speaks, I'll speak, and we leave and we leave all of those women there in jail. And this year it's our desire to take as many out with us, those who just need bail money and those who are there on a nonviolent offense and they just need bail money. We are going to get as many uh, as we can afford to get out who just need m money for bail. And so 
those things, though, have to be paid for. We just can't go up there and say, hey, we Salem and we got a good idea. Why don't y'all just let these people out? People got to pay bail. They don't have the bail to pay. Who's going to help them? And so, uh, yeah, but that's a good question. I'm always glad when people ask that question. What's the next one? Um, I just want to encourage some people who are watching that are talking about solutions or some people that are having issue that if you join a ministry, you get to transform that ministry from the inside yes. out. Yes. If we need help, there is no shortage yes. of things that you can do. Or if you see a need, if you're like, man, why do they have to pay for toilet tissue? I um, have a company or my company gives away toilet tissue all the time. We need your help in whatever capacity, whatever it is you do, we need your help. So think about joining a ministry. And if you have a grievance with a ministry, we want to to fix that. So go to the ministry leader and we want to figure out how to get you involved because there's no other way to build community. There's no better way to build community and to truly transform your church other than joining a ministry. So I know Pastor John and Pastor Leslie are more than welcome to some young people. Guys, yes. in youth church and children's Please. church, Please. they have to see Please. young people. <laughs> and media ministry. <laughs> The youth, I, I work with the youth ministry, Please. and the youth are awesome. And I sat with the children Sunday. They are not, like, <laughs> bad kids at all. They're very respectful. They they love the any attention that you give yes. them. They're your best friend. They come and hug you, and they just love to have relationship with you. And with young people, we have the energy to get up and jump and dance with them and have fun. So so please, please, please. And in the media ministry, Mark is looking for <laughs> some and, young people. And to, to speak on community real quick, two things. One, um, it's funny. When I came to Salem a year and a half ago, uh, I was uh, still kind of I was still kind of freshly new in my walk and growing and growing. You know, I've been saved maybe a couple of years, like maybe two years, but I just didn't have a ton of saved friends. Mm -hmm. And so as I was growing, then I meet, as I, since I got here, I met J Pastor John. Mm -hmm. Me and Jazz start to build. Mm -hmm. Me and Pastor Lovely start to build. So we start having these, these conversations through the office about mm -hmm. life and the perspectives and the growth. Mm -hmm. And then I just start seeing certain things in my life change over time based off of the perspective that I've had mm -hmm. with this group of people, this community I start to build then it start to expand me and Andre last week and we were we were having a conversation doing Easter rehearsal and it was this community it was me and him in the control room getting ready for for, for Easter rehearsal and we just started having a conversation about certain things and it was a God moment mm -hmm. it was a God moment for the both of us I believe where we both had us uh, had two separate outlooks on something but then when we had that conversation we both met in the middle it was that that it was the god situation so i think the community is very important as as a everybody but with mm -hmm. millennials i think it's even more so because the 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 competition of wrong outweighs mm -hmm. the r competition of right mm -hmm. if that makes sense so having that community of people to help you draw you into the good you know we were saying earlier when we were doing our research for the broadcast mm -hmm. how um the, uh having, the, church friends. having church friends and we were saying why that important i said because you can have a friend that's that's uh, unequally yoked, not mm -hmm. on the same path as you, and they're pulling you in one way, and you're trying to go this, the other way. So that's why it's important to be in a community of people. We're all in here. We're all on the same path. We're trying to do well for God. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be the best version of ourselves. And so now we can help hold, hold each other accountable when we see each other falling or we're mm -hmm. in some kind of jam. Yeah, and can I add to Pastor uh, Pastor Mark, which you just said, I think it's so essential to... Um, the Bible says if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we could come in church and we could be like, no one spoke to me. Right. Uh, the usher walked past me. And, and, and at some point, we have to take ownership and, and we have to be the ones to stay and, and be vulnerable and put ourselves out there yes. and speak to someone. Um, I guarantee you to someone, even if you come up to any one of us, we will speak to you. Uh, and we really do welcome you to come on our ministries. But we have to take ownership of that, of putting ourselves out there first. All right, so Jazz, because I, I have a, a burning issue that I want to ask millennials, but I also want to make sure that I'm not unfair to our uh, unseen audience that are typing in their questions. And so uh, are we holding up their questions or? We are, we are. We do have one question about if someone wants to start an original ministry, so it's a ministry that is not there are we taking ministry suggestions or yes. if they want to start a ministry, 
what would you suggest that they do um, as far as uh, not only on the spiritual side, but on the logistics side? Write it up, write it, write it up and send it to me, Reverend Stephen, and uh, let us know what the ministry is that you want to start. Uh, mail it in, send us an email briefly explaining it, and then we'll call you in for an interview and talk to you. So here's my question. Uh, I read a statistic that said, oh, well, no, 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 it's not just, just statistics. My daddy worked for Kentile Floors for 35 years until he retired. Uh, everybody in my daddy's generation worked at the same place until they retired. Um, baby boomers uh, work until they retire. But the statistics say that millennials are only on a job one to three years. Uh, so millennia, uh, baby boomers and the generation after that, they would look at that as negative, that you only stay at a job one to three years, and then y'all plan on, that's it. You plan on moving. So explain that to me. I'm not asking a question that it's wrong or it's negative. It's just not what our generation is used to. But y'all generation don't plan on hanging around too long. I yeah, hope. I think it's just hard to work with baby boomers. What was that noise? <laughs> no, I would, I would say that the 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 outlook probably on life would be different from back when your father was working because back then, you know, you can have a one position, that position be able to pay all the bills, get, take care of your kids. You have to worry about, I need a second source of income. Nowadays, you know the price of living goes up every year even even back then but wasn't as dramatic as it right, is now right, and then right. also with the jobs that we may start off with on the entry level one in three years if we've worked our behinds off and we're not seeing any room for growth and it's time to go someplace else like right. we're not used to having a position for 10 20 years and be okay with that it's like i think that's the difference with what's going on now and, oh. and can i speak to it uh, a different perspective is um a lot of millennials, we're entrepreneurs and innately, yeah. uh, uh, we're we're ambitious, mm -hmm. and um, so being we, we, instead of getting jobs, we take assignments. We make our mark, we do what we do, and then we move on to our next mm -hmm. assignment. I, I read an article about millennials, and so as you look at the the, the corporate cu culture is starting to shift, where a lot of corporate people don't even have office buildings anymore mm -hmm. because of the temporary nature of the millennials they hire. They have community workspaces or they like to work from home, mm -hmm. things like that. I think just naturally millennials, we're, we're, we're ambitious. We're always striving for the next big thing. So where my parents and uh, Daddy Meeks and that, you know, they was consistent, they worked, they worked their way up the ladder and then they retired and they chill. Millennials, man, we most they I read an article that said most millennials we're gonna work till we pass away. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we're working hard, it's just we we find joy mm -hmm. in the chase. And leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me add let me add to that from a different perspective, and this may be very unpopular. <laughs> But I think a lot of millennials, of course, nobody in this room or anybody watching online, but a lot of millennials <laughs> uh, are just unstable. And, and they always, they, they, they move very sporadically and always jumping from one thing to the next. And, and a lot of that has to do with them not really knowing who they are as individuals or what they really want out of life. And so they just keep trying something until they land on what it is that really fits them. But I think when you really tap into who you are, and I think that goes into tapping into the spiritual aspect, because if you seek God and, and seek what his will is for your life, you're able to understand what it is that you should be doing with your life. And then that's where you'll find some stability. And I think a lot of millennials don't really know, and they're just kind of going with the wind. So that's just a different perspective. And that instability will, will spill over into your relationships too, if you're not careful. Because and the student loans too, because we're trying to oh get rid Lord. of these student loans. Uh -huh. it's, it's just crazy. Lord. Tiffany, uh, who is a, um, a great volunteer here at the Salem Baptist Church, she sings on our praise scene faithfully, so shout out to you, Tiffany. Me too. She had a comment that said, we are strategically and methodically working ourselves towards our dream position. 
We no longer work in an environment where you have to stay in one role or in one company. You acquire the skills and connections you need to make them and you need and use those to make our next move. So she's saying that we're building careers and not necessarily jobs. So if you think about it, your father was not educated. He didn't have You talking uh, about your grandfather. <laughs> your daddy was dumb. Don't I mean, listen. I can hear your him right now. Dumb. What what are you talking about? <laughs> He, he was a wise man, but he did not have any for a lot of formal education. But he, right. he had a lot of street smart. He could fix anything with duct tape. However, <laughs> <laughs> when you get a lot of education, like RJ said, you get all these loans. You want to work towards a position. Of course, you can't get in entry level at the position that you want. So you're trying to work towards your dream job where you're mm. not so indispensable. And now companies, when you get to a certain age, they're just getting rid of you. Um, so you have to try to make those connections so that you can be in a position where you are stable and in management or um, vice president or things like that where they can't easily get rid of you just at a low-level position because they're like, okay, well, we need to liven it up and we need new young people. So now uh, one day we're going to be old and, uh, you know, we need to be in a position where we are uh, stable with that. So I think that's what it is. I don't know who I'm helping. I don't know who who's watching who recently lost a loved one. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, your loved one will stay with you. I, I hear my daddy speaking every day. I hear something that some, so when Jasmine was saying about, you know, my father, I, I heard him say just as plain as day, I was smart enough not to get all them loans. <laughs> <laughs> your, your loved one will always be with you. You will always, just like learning how to hear the voice of God, you will always hear the voice of your loved one too. Uh, we do have to talk about, and we are putting together some things. I have to keep them uh, quiet because they're not together yet. We're putting together some things to try to address student loans. We really are because we do know that a lot of our millennials and a lot of Gen Xers are really battling student loans. And that's a pressure on you in the church. You come to church faithfully, uh, you love the Lord, you serve, but you, you got all this debt that you're dealing with and there's no way out of it. And we're trying to find out for the Salem um, young people, and, and that's right, I said Salem. I know that people who watch these things, sometimes they say they're only concerned about their church. Well, yes. <laughs> Uh, for the Salem young people who serve our church faithfully, we're trying to come up with something, some way of addressing the student loan debt. So keep praying, and uh, every time you think of it, say a prayer, especially those of you with student loans, saying <laughs> God help the church come up with something quick. Amen. Amen. But uh, we want to figure out how we can address the needs that you all have, and we know that's one big need, and we want to try to figure out how to address it. And if you have a solution, we don't know everything. So anything that you feel like you have figured out, that you've gotten to the bottom of, that God gave you, um, however way he would give you, we please email us, info at sbcoc.org. If you have a solution for paying off our House of Hope debt, we asked about that. If you have a solution for how we can reach our community this summer and evangelize, we'd love to hear about that. If you have a solution about student loan debt reduction, please, we want to hear about that. We'll put you, we may put you up on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we're down to about our last three or four minutes. I don't want to miss anybody who has a burning question. You know, we're talking about solutions. We're talking about millennials and, and being in church and what would make you happy, what makes you sad, what is it that we can do to improve uh, ourselves to one of the things that we try to do here at Salem as it relates to improvement is to not have a long worship service. When I was a Woo. kid coming up from church, church was three hours easy, 11 yes. to 2. We went to church at 11 o'clock and we didn't get out to 2. Wow. And uh, we try to have an hour and a half service. An hour and a half is long for some people. <laughs> but uh, at least we are conscious of the fact that, you know, people just don't want to sit in church all day i would but a lot of people don't like it and so we're mindful of that that's why jazz said whatever solutions you have to a problem that is keeping you out of church throw it our way because if it's keeping you out it could be keeping a lot of other people out 
Tell us how you would fix it, how you would solve it, or tell us the problem, and we'll try to solve it. All right, any, any questions from the audience, the live audience, before we sign off? We're going to ask your questions. Then we're going to go back to those who are online, and then we're going to be prepared to sign off. We're so excited that you all are here tonight. We have to make this uh, monthly kind of thing, hanging out. Absolutely. Uh, so I don't have a question. I just want to throw this quick little plug out there that uh, we know that Salem is really looking for the next uh, generation of leaders to kind of step up and do some things. And so this core, this core of young brothers at the church, we're looking to expand and grow. And so we're thinking of ways, creative ways to get in, to get all of the young brothers of Salem engaged, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s. We want to really build up the men's ministry of the church. And speaking of men's ministry, we have the man cave that meets every first yes. Sunday at 9 a.m. And, and that's led by a group of uh, diverse brothers, young and old. So we encourage all the men of Salem to but come out. But who's the head brother? Who's the brother that leads it up? Who's the head brother? Well, that, that will be me, RJ Carter. All right. <laughs> so I, I do lead the, the man Mama cave Leo. on first Sundays. Bishop Bob. And <laughs> Bishop Bob. Bishop Bob. <laughs> and, and I'm very humble and, and appreciative to do that and we, we've had some great conversations we talk yeah. about financial literacy we talk about emotions and, and uh, marriage and, and an array of, of uh, different categories so I encourage all the brothers of Salem to come out to the man cave every first Sunday yeah. you know looking around this room and um, realizing that you know, he does head man cave and we, young people are dealing with ministry and dealing with media and jazz makes announcements and it's hard for people to say that we're not giving the millennials a chance or millennials don't have a place here at Salem you know not only are we giving you chances but we're opening up more spaces for you all this is your church your generation you got to take it now not we ain't asking you we ain't waiting to the next generation to hand it off to you we're trying to hand it as much as we can hand off to you now. And so that's why your ideas are welcome. Those of you who are online, uh, did we have the last person online, Jazz, did we hear from them? Or did we, Jazz? There's a lot of conversation <laughs> happening online, a lot of con a conversation to each other. Oh, good. So I'm glad that you guys are fellowshipping and getting to know each other. I know a lot of these people that are online will be at brunch Sunday. Yes. So if you want to meet these people in person, make sure you meet us at Tilly's. Only $10 for brunch. If you need assistance with getting a brunch, you don't have the $10 to come, please um, email us at info at sbcoc.org. We have some people who want to sponsor some young adults to come to the brunch. Or if you want to sponsor a young adult, make sure you email us. Find somebody's email. It don't matter. Call up here tomorrow, um, and we will figure out how to get you on the list if you can't pay or if you want to pay for someone else. And I think Brandy has a comment. I just wanted to encourage um, everyone that's online, um, don't feel like you have to be i don't know ho holier than thou to be on a ministry yeah. or to be involved and get involved in the church be yourself god will work on you in the process and bring you closer with other people that's trying to work on themselves together the thing is you have to work on yourself with god you can't do it by yourself and Tiffany, who, who had a great comment, she said she'd love to chat about career strategy and upper mobility with anyone who is at a career crossroads or contemplating a change. So meet her, meet Tiffany at the brunch. I know she's going to be there. She already got her ticket. I saw she got her ticket. So that's a great connection to make. I, I want to say one thing to all the millennials that, that, that's listening. We give a lot of things a chance. We'll, we'll try. We'll try a lot of things. A lot of us that maybe go to nightclubs, we'll go to a club one time, and if it's whack, we'll stop going. We'll we we'll, we'll, we'll go to a restaurant. We we'll go if single people. You'll go out with one person one time. But the only thing we won't give a chance sometime, a lot of times, one time is God and church. Yeah. So I want to encourage you guys. Give it a chance, and I promise you. It would be the best decision you ever made. Give God a chance and give church a chance. It will change your life. I promise you. Just be open-minded to and receptive to what you can experience. Now, church, you might have to give two times. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because if you come here on a Sunday where the guy named Steve is speaking. 
<laughs> he, he has really big words, and he will open you, ask you to open your kingdom constitution, and he will soon tell you something about a pericope uh, <laughs> and, uh, and some stuff like that, and you might just say, oh, no, I ain't coming back to this church no more. But if you listen to the little guy, he's a good preacher. <laughs> it just filter through the stuff that, you know, the big words, but he's a good preacher. But then, so you'll have to come back when he preaches, then listen. you'll have to come back when I'm preaching, yes. when you'll listen. understand and you'll know and you'll get it. So you got to give us two chances uh, when you come. But listen, it has been a joy, a ball tonight to just have this conversation. And Carnell, hats off to you for your abilities. And uh, Carnell has the technical eye, the training, the know-how to pull all of this together. And maybe you're watching and you say, look, I'm in media and uh, I have some ideas and I would like to do, I mean, just Carnell flew a drone yeah. in the House of Hope, yeah. in the House of Hope on Easter Sunday, taking uh, video, live video. And uh, I was so scared when he told me about the idea that I could just see something falling on people's head. <laughs> but you know, it's all about trust. And uh, so you might have ideas, something that God has put in you. Uh, use it, use your talent, use it for the kingdom and use it all for his glory. So any one of you, any of our young men, young women, anybody want to close this out in prayer? All righty. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, to be able to talk with one another, to be able to share our life experiences, to ask the questions that are pertinent to us, Father God, and for giving us the wisdom around us to be able to not only answer those questions, but to charge us with things to be able to do in the future that would change our lives, to encourage us to connect and have a relationship with other young adults that we would be able to bounce ideas off of, that we would be able to grow from and talking to and spending time with. Father God, we pray for every young adult in this room. Yeah. We pray for every um, young adult that's watching us right now, Father God, and we ask that you will speak a special blessing over our lives. Yes, we know that you've called us for such a time as this, and you said in your word, Father God, that when the enemy would come in like a flood, you would raise up a standard against him, and we believe that we're that standard that you're raising up, so use us in a mighty way, Father God. Help us to continue to learn. Help us to continue to have an open heart, an yes, open God. mind, Father God, to be able to receive from you, and let your Holy Spirit continue to minister to us as we get those seeds planted in us from others father god from from uh, older people that have been there before that are sharing their wisdom with us that are planting those seeds in us let the holy spirit and your word continue to water that within us that it will bring forth much fruit father god so we thank you for this time and we look forward to the next time of being yeah. able to do this again it's in jesus mighty name we pray amen, amen. and pastor right. your, your wife said come on home with your stinky feet uh -huh. <laughs> no she didn't she said come on come on home no we, you did a great job well good let let me say this so tonight we had saved young adults next time we're gonna have the thug crowd <laughs> <laughs> and uh as a matter of fact hey let's figure out a way jazz at tilly's to pick the next crowd who will do facebook live with us and let's pick that crowd out of the tilly's crowd and uh because i don't necessarily want young adults to think like brandy just said that you have to be the kind to know all the scriptures, to have all the, I want young adults who are struggling, who don't know a lot about the Bible, who got questions and want to be a part of. So those of you who come to Tilly's, we'll figure out a way to get you involved, even in the next Facebook Live if you want. Until then, I'll see you Sunday in church. If I don't see you in church, I'll see you at Tilly's at from one until four, 161st and first in Torrance where it's going to be turned up hey. whatever that means all right goodbye good night good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Woo. like what does turned up mean what is what is what is lit what is lit what is, lit? What is jack jacked up